and, and the social bit, although I said this is a work thing for me, um, I do think it's social as well. So I think you do have to give something of yourself. So I really don't like businesses that go on there, for example, and simply flog themselves. Um, mm. I don't think how it works. And so I do think you have to go on there every now and then and talk about something personal. I think I do, you know, so I do talk a bit about what I'm doing in my personal life. Not a huge amount, but a bit about it. So you know, if you did follow me and you bothered to read it, because you, you obviously don't have to, if you follow me, um, you would have some idea about what I do outside of work, because I do mention it. Anyway, um, what I have got is a series of slides that I want you to think about. Um, and the first one is, is Goldilocks and the Three, the three Bears. Um, does everyone know the fairy tale of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Is there anyone who doesn't know it? Oh, go on, tell us. <laughs> Actually, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me. So I want you to spend a couple of minutes just summarising, you scribble this somewhere, summarise Goldilocks and the Three Bears. As if you were telling a young child, this is what the story is. But in like two paragraphs, 60 words, 100 words, don't write me a book. So if you could just do that quickly for me, that'd be helpful. She's bad, she's good. There's all sorts of things in there when you listen to it, and you listen to it too many times, where, where, um, where, where, where he may be picking up on some of the bias or... Or, or the point of view that you started with and coming from the opposite, but then he'll be saying things in there which actually you'd, you'd agree with or disagree with. And it, it's quite an interesting piece of writing. But the bit I want to talk about mostly today is this whole thing about what you write and how you write it. You know, how, how do you cope with the fact that you come from a background? And so when you're writing, that comes through. Um, in a newspaper, we write somewhere between 100 and 150 stories every day, and every single story we write, we have that issue. Um, and I know some of you, when you were doing that last piece, you were writing about stuff which uh, we have covered, and which has caused quite a lot of conversation around the city about how we've covered it. Because, uh, and, and we see it on our own website, I see it on my own blog, there's a massive row going on about, with people who start with a different point of view and what they come up with. Now my question for you is, does it matter? Does it matter? You know, they'll, you know, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Does it matter? When you're writing, does it matter that you come from a certain point of view? Who you're writing for? Does it? Well, I'm saying, I would think it probably would. If you want to sell something, you've got to have something that people want to buy. I do it professionally, commercially, I sell. But for most of you, in most of what's being talked about here, are you worrying about selling it? Yes. Who said yes? You are worrying about selling it. That's why you're on this course. Well, it kind of depends on the definition of sell, though, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, your, your cell is a sort of monetary gain. My idea of cell would be influence. Okay. I think that's interesting, the, the influencing thing. Um, I think um, some of the material I see that people contribute has an educative value or an information or an awareness raising value that has nothing to do with them particularly sitting down and maybe thinking about their audience. They're actually just inputting information that people, lots of other people can access. It's a very crude example, but for example, like when I first started drawing, growing dreadlocks, I was amazed at how much material there is on YouTube and people blogging about the best techniques, the best methods. Okay, to, I'm to going to sound really eager now. Can you, can you grow a dreadlock? You have to grow these, yes. Um, they're nurtured like, you know... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's to get them going. But there's there's so much information about the products, the techniques, the best methods, and then you get debates and arguments about what was blogged before, what was discussed before. So I don't think people always do think about an audience as such. They're just putting forward their own view, and I think that's what cyberspace offers. That you don't have to think about some of those things about being neutral, fair, or balanced. Not necessarily having rants, but just putting a completely new set of information, ideas, techniques, and putting them out there. Doesn't that depend on who you are as well, though? Because you, yes, you, you can write about how to, how to grow dreadlocks from your opinion, but if you were editor of 
dreadlock weekly, then you'd have to be fairly balanced and. But I suspect the dreadlock weekly would probably be like Keith would be looking at the, the blogs and the twitters and everything, mm. and maybe looking at people. Because one of the interesting things with that dreadlock example is the people across the world, from Eastern Europe to wherever, who are interested in growing, uh, growing, growing dreadlocks and the different information and techniques that they put in. So that's now a source of research for the editor. Yes. You need to, to remove your own bias or you need to look for a different bias to the, the law that's presented to you. One of my children has been diagnosed with ADHD, but the problem is it's a truth based perception. And you, as Aren't they the same thing? And the BBC um, have to present what is considered facts as the truth. People's perception of that. But, but when you said that we have to present the truth, well, I don't understand what that means. Like, but I mean, just, just take the, the terrorist or freedom fighter. So it's always going to be opposition to the main um, uh, political power that be. Uh, case in point, Jesus Christ, at the time he was born, uh, when he started spreading his blood, was considered to be a terrorist. Uh, he was the only one who said, oh, I will the church. Because, yeah, <coughs> Hang on a sec, is that true? Well, that's true. Well, not them words. <laughs> I wouldn't put not it in words. No. <laughs> he was a threat to the status quo at the time. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm just listening to everybody. I'm just curious. Media, is it there to inform or to make us think? Which one is it there for? Function. Oh, yeah. Is it to make us think, think, think about what's going on or is it to, to inform us about what's going on? But have we not just discovered one simple fact of human life? That there are many truths. Absolutely. <laughs> Didn't know I was having philosophy, so <laughs> because I think the important point is, is 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 how that's reflected in what you write, in in terms of whether you know whether you're talking about Twitter in 140 characters, um, or, or whether you're talking about writing a blog, or if you're talking about trying to write something for my newspaper. Um, I, I think you at least have to have thought this bit through, and have a have a view in your mind about what it is you're trying to do, and. Uh, as a newspaper editor, you know, I'm not going to try and answer those questions you ask me because, you know, because I want to say, yeah, all of those. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't. Is, 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 are we there to inform or entertain? Yep, both those. Uh, do we? Are there lots of different truths? But does that also mean there's lots of different falsehoods? Are they all lies as well? Yeah. They're both true and they're both lies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same sides of the same coin. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> coin always has two sides. What, what if you looked at it as an art form, where it's it's about it doesn't matter if um, you portray somebody as a terrorist or a freedom fighter, because at the end of the day you are engendering debate yep. um, and passion, and if that's the point, like like a painting, not everybody will like it. Some people will love it. Some people will love it. But as long as you get comments, you've got people interested in the art form. Mm -hmm. That's valid. There are some, thinking about newspapers, there are some that I wouldn't read, or I, I maybe I used to read them mm -hmm. when I worked in a job that had them in the staff room. I read them and I sort of sat there going, tup, 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 how can people think like that? Um, but I wouldn't go out and buy them. <coughs> um, but there are other newspapers that I think people maybe read um, and don't expect to agree with everything in them. You know, so you, you're still choosing which kind of bias to, to go along with. My question for you is, how are you going to write? Yeah. How, how are you going to write? Are you going to try and write? Are you going to try and write from a, a neutral point of view? Or are you trying to write an opinion? You know, I, I don't think you can say that there are many truths about everything, can you? There are, there are certain things that are true, full stop. Isn't there? Aren't there? No. Nothing. Yeah, there are some truths. Well, some it's, 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 it's 14 minutes past 12. No, this is a remote control. This is a table. That's not true. Somebody argued this is not a table. Sensible.